I never buy reality shows where people aren't aware of the camera. I was like weirded out when people were like, oh, you're just rom-com. Here it comes, Bridesmaids 2. Yeah, <laughs> please, You please. just heard it here. <laughs> Welcome to the Drew Barrymore Show. Joining us in the Digital Hub is one of my favorite directors of all time, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paul Fee. Oh, thank you, Drew. Hi, everybody. Okay, my first question to you, I think of Ang Lee and Curtis Hansen and Billy Wilder when I think of you. All three incredible yes. directors who I never knew what was coming from them next. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Is that on purpose? Do you like different styles? Who influences you? How did you achieve this much range in your body of work? Oh, thanks, Drew. You know what? I It is on purpose. I like to do genres, and my, my goal is to work through every genre in the world, and then, I don't know, retire? No, I'll never retire. But I like to surprise people because I like to surprise myself because I, I don't want to do the same thing over and over again. You know how that is. I do, actually. Mm. I was like weirded out when people were like, oh, you're just rom-com, like yeah. that's all you are. And then I tried to do some dramas here and there and some of them were very fulfilling and some weren't. And then I was like, you know what? I think I'm a little bit of that Sullivan's Travels, like I'll search the world and come back to the North Star of comedy. Everything I do is comedy, even if it's something you know dark like A, a Simple Favor. That's Which I love. Comedy. Thank you. Thank you. Blake Lively's so hot in that movie. She was inspired by my suits, so I, I take great pride that when we were doing our first costume fitting, trying to figure out what to, what she should wear, she goes, I want to dress like you. <laughs> it's like, okay, so, which I love, because I really wanted her to have that style. Oh, that's such hot backstory, because I love her costumes in that movie. There you go. I want to ask you really quick, because I won't be able to word it the same way on the show, but I'm watching the first episode of Minx right now. Ah and one of your latest projects. But what is going on, Paul, with D? We'll call it D. <laughs> but I think you all know what appendage and word I'm trying to mention. <laughs> like, should HBO change it to HDO? <laughs> Have you seen Euphoria? I know, I, I haven't seen that show, but I hear, I hear they, they beat us to the punch, if you will. When you're doing a show about a, the starting of a, an erotic magazine starring with men in it, you got to be honest. You got to show. You got to show the goods. So uh, and the not so goods. And well, then you kind of do think, oh, they're they're all the same as she says. Exactly. And then you're like, you look at them on parade, and you're like, no, they are not. It was our way of, of educating the world <laughs> to what lies beneath. But the the sexist nature of how we idolize a woman's body, like we do not celebrate the male body the same way that we do women. Why do you think that is? Ah, uh, I think there's just something more aggressive about male male nudity, potentially. Also, I don't think, I, and I'm only speaking from what I've heard from other women say, that doesn't affect women the way that guys do when they see like a naked lady. That's what I'm told. I know, but why? I have no idea. But that's the big debate in the show is, is you know, she says, oh, who wants to see that? And, and they say, well, actually, people might want to. So I love that you're a part of, you know, making a show that, discusses that. Um, I'm really enraptured with it. Like, I can't stop watching. It's pretty great. And, and how good is Jake Johnson? He's so cute, too, yeah. by the way. Um, but he is very appealing. Yeah. Yeah. Will you please tell me about your current other project, um, Flatch? Yeah, uh, Welcome to Flatch. It's a, uh, a docu-series, so kind of like the way that The Office was, uh, following these two cousins in the small town of Flatch, Ohio. And it's just delightful. It's it, based on a BBC show called um, This Country. And it's just really funny. I call it the comfort food show, because you laugh and you also just want to just sit there and be in that town. So you don't blink twice with fourth wall breakdown? No, I love it. You do? I love it, yeah. I, I love the old movies when, you know, if you go all the way back to, you know, the Marx Brothers and, you know, Groucho just look in the camera and say a line. And I just find it really funny, that yeah. breaking of the fight. I find it, you know, anything that- John of, Hughes always yeah. did it. See? Eddie Murphy, like, go. all, yes. That you're right. Yeah, I think it just makes it, it's more personal with the audience, and also it's, since it's supposed to be a reality show, I never buy reality shows where people aren't aware of the camera because clearly they know they're on camera and there's a camera standing right there. So I'd rather have them look at it and, and go like, okay, and I know that their their behavior is being affected by the camera. There. 
I never thought of it that way. You will act very differently if a camera's here than if a camera's not here. Well, in my case, I've been with a well, camera since I was say, in diapers. It's I, my best friend and not a, you, you. a family <laughs> member, and I'm totally comfortable with it. Have you done some films? <laughs> yeah, I, I really do think of the camera as my friend. And I've never lived my life for a camera. What I'm having an aha moment about, Paul, is that the one genre I feel like I don't really get that excited about is reality TV because all the shows are pretending like the camera's not in the room. Exactly. I say the only true reality show that ever existed was Candid Camera. Which is the best. The greatest, because people have no idea they're on camera. That's why I married Tom Green. There you go. Yeah, oh my God, who who I love. Love him too. You know, and Bruce McCullough, one of my best friends. <gasps> yes. I love the kids in the hall, there Bruce McCullough. I think Bruce was the first person to put Tom in a movie. That's he, right. Where he just yelled out in the, in the crowd. I think it was Superstar, Superstar, I think. There's just not a lot of people who sort of like pioneer new formats. I mean, mm. I think when people did things, especially before digital and camera in your hand, the lengths that they had to go through in order to capture this yeah. stuff was a big effort. Oh yeah, totally. And now we just d take it for granted. No, in our phone you can shoot something that looks like a million bucks. You and know, anybody HD. can shoot anything and put it out everywhere. These people had to find cable access. Oh yeah, totally. Like we think of the Wayne's World like premise, like people had to yeah. find a way to capture it, find a place to put it out there. And by the way, this um, week's People Magazine in their What to Watch area has um, Welcome to Flatch and Minx. Both your shows are in there. We did it all, I love that. I'm so proud of these shows for, for completely different reasons. Do you think there will ever be a Freaks and Geeks reboot and reunion? And is that the question that also you just constantly get asked? <laughs> Look, I, I love that people are still talking about it. It's over 20 years old and, you know, usually stuff gets forgotten. So that makes me very happy. I, my instinct is there won't be just because I'm so happy with what we did. And I've never seen a reunion thing that I've really kind of like. I don't know. There's, there's, there's exceptions to the rule. But it's I hard. Steven said never. he would never make an ET2. Yeah, yeah. Like, the, I, I get it. Right, like people want a Bridesmaids too, which would be fun, but but think about it though. Why we love that movie so much is about Kristen Wiig's character going through the fire and kind of repairing herself. So then does she go through the fire again and fall apart again, or we just have a crazy wedding? Maybe it's her turn to get married. Well, there you go. Well, uh-oh. Here it comes, Bridesmaids 2. Yeah. <laughs> please, you just please, heard please. it here. <laughs> Drew, get writing. Right. Get writing I right mean, now. Let's text Kristen. Let's. We can send her a video. We yeah, can yeah. make her a video on the show. Kristen, I think we just came up with the concept. Exactly. Now you and no, Annie. you just have to write it. Go <laughs> get writing. Exactly. Oh, Paul, thank you. Well, thank you, Drew. So much fun. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Drew Barrymore Show in our digital edition with Mr. Paul Feig, one of the very greatest ever.